everyone. Welcome to worship at Roscoe Presbyterian Church. We apologize. We're having some Facebook Live internet connectivity issues. So literally, technical difficulties. Uh, but we are live, and so we are thank you for being here in person. Thank you to all of you who are joining us from home. It is our deep hope that this is a time when you are nourished and fed in the deepest parts of who you are. So welcome to worship. Just a couple of announcements to get on your hearts and minds today. One, um, we are still in our phase one of reopening the church, which means we're just doing Sunday morning. That's it. No outside groups are coming in during the week, and the office is still fully remote except for Thursday mornings. You know, with school reopening and Indiana's numbers are still kind of not going in the right direction, um, for the time being, we're going to just try to do worship safely. And then we will expand as we can. So just a heads up that we are in phase one still. And then lastly, um, we got a, a note from our friends over at the Living Stone Church uptown that next Saturday evening from 7 to 9 p.m. in the Rossville Park, they are hosting a open to the community concert. Gentleman by the name of Michael Wayne Smith, not the same as Michael W. Smith, different guy. Uh, he's coming, he's come before, and he's going to lead a concert. And so it is open to the public. So you are so invited to go enjoy some fantastic music. It's from 7 to 9 p.m., it's totally free. All that you need is a blanket or a lawn chair, and you're good to go. So go have fun and be fed. Now I invite you to take a few moments to put down whatever is stressing you out, to put down the week, to put down social media, to just rest and prepare your hearts to worship God.
Scripture tells us that if we come to church and we think we've got life figured out, there is some part of us that is probably not telling the whole truth. But Scripture also tells us that God is gracious and merciful and pretty cool and easy to talk to. And when we come to Him and confess our sins and put our lives down at His feet, He gives it back to us tenfold with His grace and His love. So I invite you, would you join me together as we pray together the prayer of confession, saying, God, we look and listen, we taste and touch. All our senses tell us things are not good. More than that, it feels like life is trending downward in so many ways. And we confess that we feel drained, defeated, and at times hopeless. In the mess of life, we find ourselves missing the beauty, the community, the reckless joy of being close to you. Because that too, our near and dear kinship with you, has also grown stale and cold. Jesus, you are the Lord of life. You are the God of the gutter. You are the Savior of the whole world. Come, bathe us in your mercy. And hear us now as we continue with you in silence. Jesus taught them. But they had a 
problem. The problem was they were fighting. And they were fighting a lot. And it got so bad that the group of people split. And they split into two groups and they didn't talk to one another and they didn't want to hang out. They didn't even want to go to church together. They were so upset because one group said, hey, we're better than you. And the other group said, no, we're better than you. And the fighting kept going. And people were getting really, really frustrated because it seemed like it would never end. But then, all of a sudden, they got a letter in the mail. And it was written from somebody that they'd never even met before, but they had heard about him. And this guy, his name was Paul, and he wrote them a letter and he said, listen up. Neither one of you are nearly as cool as you think you are. So, here's the deal. When we as Christians come together, nobody is better than anyone else. And I get that you're frustrated because living for Jesus is hard sometimes. But who we are is not about fighting. It's not about being right. It's not about being better than the next person. It's about Jesus. It's about loving people, giving them a hug, welcoming someone at the door who you've never met before, being nice to someone whose day at school is the first one and you're new to town. You see, sometimes we get frustrated. I'm sure school is not all of that fun all the time right now. You have to wear those things, masks, and it's annoying, right? Like, it's just annoying to wear this. But we know it's because we're trying to take care of each other and ourselves, right? We're just trying to not hurt anybody. But still, things get frustrating. And Paul says, it's okay if you're frustrated and you don't want to sit and you want to run around the church. It is okay if you don't like your face mask. It's okay if school doesn't feel the same because, because that doesn't change who you are. And who you are is a loving person is somebody who is kind to strangers, is somebody who loves to run around the church because it's home, because it's fun. Who you are is more than what you're feeling, it's more than what you do. So as you go to school this week, and you're gonna be frustrated, that's okay. But don't let the frustration get the better of you. Nobody but Jesus gets that. Okay. All right, so normally what we do is we stand in together in a circle and we hold hands and pray. But obviously, we can't really do that. So can we just fold our hands and close our eyes and all pray for us? Okay. Jesus, thank you for another day. Another day where we get to live in your joy and your grace and also another day where sometimes we feel really frustrated because there's so much going on right now. It's just annoying. And at the same time, you teach us to not let that get the better of us. But who we are is not our frustrations or our anger. We don't have to lash out. Who we are is a people of grace. And sometimes we forget that you have called us to a new life, full of your love and your friendship. So as we go to school this week, as we go home, as we get frustrated with our siblings and our parents and our face masks and all the things, give us patience. Give us joy. Give us hope. You are our everything, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may now go back to your seats. Look like you let me light a candle real quick. Would that be cool? Okay. All right. So, Miss Brooklyn, you remember how we do this, right? So you hold that and I'll help you. Lift it really high. We're going to light this candle. And this
this candle is a special candle. You light it on Christmas Eve and you don't stop lighting it. It reminds us that God is here and he's going to speak to us right now. Thank you so much. As we prepare to listen to what God is going to say to us this morning, I invite you to join me as we say a prayer that we normally sing. It's called Speak, O Lord. Would you join me? Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O oh Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Amen. So the scripture passage we're going to spend some time with this morning is taken from the book of Romans. And it's a chapter, the 12th chapter, and we've been spending some time in this because Paul is writing to a group of people that are going through something similar to what we are. They're going through a funk, a haze, the stress of a crisis. So the scripture passage that we're going to start with begins with the ninth verse. So hear these words. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Don't lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. And extend hospitality to strangers. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So up until this very moment. Paul was doing so good. So far, this letter that he wrote to these Christians was full of these beautiful images and metaphors and fancy words. But then it changes. The tone just drops and the language is different. He drops the shining phrases and he just says what's on his mind. I imagine Paul pacing up and down as he's dictating this letter to a scribe. And he's talking and there's this pressure, this volcanic pressure building beneath his chest. And it finally erupts completely unfiltered. Like a parent who was just sick and tired of their kids squabbling in the backseat of the car. And after trying everything he can to just be a nice, well-tempered parent, Paul reaches the end of his composure, pulls the car off the side of the road, and says, All right, enough. I, am I going to have to come back there and teach you a lesson? Just be nice and stop bothering each other. It feels like Paul is having one of those parent moments. He drops the big words and the complex phrases and takes a kind of sawed-off, 12-gauge shotgun approach to ministry. He pulls the trigger and sprays some spiritual buckshot and just says, love each other. Be genuine. Hate what's evil. Hold on to what is good. Love the way Christ loves you. Rejoice. Be hopeful. Keep praying. Help each other out. Just be nice. And stop bothering 
each other. Paul sounds kind of frustrated. And sometimes he's teaching us it's actually okay to do that. To say that things have been frustrating lately is like the largest understatement of the century, definitely of the year. It's amazing how a simple piece of cloth like this, the little elastic band, has just split this country in half. It is frustrating. It is so frustrating that we are still in the thick of COVID and dealing with no clear way out. It's frustrating how many people are grandstanding on social media and acting like they know what they're talking about. It's frustrating that everything has to change because of a simple virus. Because something isn't just frustrating and it isn't just wrong. It feels off. It feels off in the way that's important. And Paul is leading us to listen to the frustration. Now, to be fair, Paul has never been known as a calm, cool-headed, collected kind of person. So it's actually kind of impressive that it only took him this long to blow up finally on these Christians. And it's frustrating for him because he's saying that life, most of the time, is a shade of gray. But every now and then, it becomes black. And what? For these people that he's talking to, their problem was actually kind of simple. They were living a lie. They made the classic mistake that all Christians make. And you look at scripture and it's all over the place. They forgot who they were. They had a kind of spiritual amnesia. And these people, they thought they were first Jewish or Roman, or conservative, or progressive, or female, or male, or rich, or poor, and Paul is saying, not even close. You're both wrong. You are a new creation. The old way of doing things is gone. The new is here. And the same is true for us. Every week it seems like there's something big and cataclysmic that's occurring, whether it's hunting for a new vaccine or going into space with a private company where you hear the creaking and the cracking of the economy. And it can be helpful to admit that we're frustrated. We're frustrated because we don't want to wear masks in church. We want to sing. We want to hug. We want school to be normal. We want to go on mission trips. We just want to go out to dinner with our friends and family, not have to think about it too much. We want to go on trips. We don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. We don't want to worry about our kids going to school. But here we are. And Paul says the key to working through our frustrations is to simply be who we are. Which sounds easy, except there's a trick, there's a wrinkle. Who you are is not who you were. It's who you're becoming in Christ. It's resisting the urge to savagely take someone down on Facebook when they say something incredibly rude and mean and hurtful to you. It's doing everything you can to make sure your kids and grandkids feel loved, even if can't hug and kiss them the way you normally do. It's responding to grace, to hate with grace, to bigotry with acceptance, to scarcity with generosity, to a riot with peace. Life is getting way too serious right now. And now more than most, we're just trying to survive. We're just trying to stay afloat. We're just trying to make sure the water doesn't get too high. And Paul is saying, good. And don't lose yourself in the process. Your life is more than the clatter and chatter of COVID. 
COVID. And sometimes the only way to know it is just to do it. To not overthink faith and just live it. Because anything else at the end of the day is just not who we are. I invite you now to take a few breaths and pause because we rush so quickly from one thing to the next every day. And sometimes the gift that God is giving us is a simple moment to be with Him, to rest in His presence, and to listen to the frustrations, listen to what He is saying to us. So take a moment to reflect, take a moment to listen, and to just be with God. Gratitude to 
God is first giving him a gift of soul, a gift of spirit. Right now, there are a group of people that are carrying a huge burden, a huge load for this community. And so today, we thank God for our teachers. These people are not only teaching, but sometimes they are parenting almost. They are providing for the needs of their kids and making sure that they are safe. Now they are having to act kind of like nurses and keep their places clean and make very difficult decisions. And as a community, as a community of faith, we get an opportunity to thank God for our teachers. Can we give all of our teachers a round of applause today? you pray with me. God, we lift you to these tithes and offerings out of the depth of gratitude that is in our souls. And we thank you, God, for our teachers, for the people who you have called to love on our kids during one of the most tumultuous times in recent history. God, please strengthen them with your creativity, with your energy, with your passion, with your freshness of thought, of mind, of presence. Lord, we give to you these tithes and offerings because we look out over the landscape of our lives and we see that you have walked all over the place. You've been good to us. You've taken care of us. You've brought us to this special and holy place where we get to feel your presence not just once a week, but every day because wherever we are, wherever we go, we are a family in faith in you. So we lift to you these words because you've taught us the wisdom of the ages that this is true, that you are God and we are not, and that is the best news in the world. So we lean back on the truth of who we are, the truth of who you are in us, by praying together the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as God has spoken to us, we have an opportunity to share with him and with one another what's been going on in our lives, what's been going on in our hearts, that we can lift to God and one another in prayer. So as we have learned over the last few weeks, we are doing this a little differently. And so to make sure that all of you who are at home are joining us in prayer, what I'll do is I'll invite you to raise your hand as you have a prayer request. I will come and listen to it, and then I will repeat it in the microphone for all of us to hear, and then we will pray that together. So what prayers of joy, concern, anything in between can we lift? for God and one another this morning. Yes, Mr. Terry. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Terry shared with us that our brother Braxton Bassett, who as many of you know suffered severe third degree burns on his whole left leg and half of his abdomen. He's been uh, recovering from a full skin graft at Ryan Hospital. There's a decent chance he's going to get to come home tomorrow. And so we pray for him and for his parents, for his grandparents, as they have a long road of recovery ahead. Lord, we lift you our brother Braxton. You are the healer, not just of the body, but of the nations. And so we ask that you would surround him, Lord, with your angels. You would protect him. Purge him of all pain. Let his body heal and be at peace as it grows the skin back. Lord, we ache and suffer with him and with his parents and his siblings 
and his whole family as they have endured another crisis in a long series. And God, we ask that you make a smooth way for him to come home, that he may rest and recover and join us once more in spirit and in body. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Joan. Yeah, just holler at that. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Joan shared that her daughter Madison just moved to D.C. is starting a new job in D.C. tomorrow. And so she's got a new apartment, she has a new home, she has a new workplace. And what better place for someone as brilliant as Maddie to be than in service and helping this country to be safe and helping us to be a healthy nation. Let us pray for Maddie. Lord, please. We, well, one, we thank you for getting her to D.C. safely. We thank you, Lord, that you've given her a fantastic opportunity to use her education to help this country be healthier, be stronger, be better. Lord, as she starts this job, help her to hit the ground running and see and feel that this is exactly where she is supposed to be. Leverage all of her gifts, her energy, her talents for your glory in this place, in that state, in this wonderful city that she is living in, that all of us may be better for her service. Lord, in your mercy. Mike, yes, sir. Mike shared with us a prayer of concern for one of his co-workers down in, former co-workers in Indianapolis, Tracy, who was just diagnosed with a progressive but slow-moving form of cancer. So let us lift her in prayer. God, we give to you, Tracy, we ask that you would surround her and protect her. Give her a fantastic medical team that will give her all the time you have called her to and more to raise her two grandchildren, to be here, to love them, and Lord, please give her a path to full remission. We know that cancer is a scary word and it scares the living fool out of us. And we also know, Lord, that it does not have a final say on our life. Only you get that. And you have a good word to say to her. So please, Lord, strengthen her. Give her patience as she finds a good treatment plan. And be near to her in these days and weeks and months ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jenny, yes. Absolutely. We got a word just a couple days ago that our brother Charlie Beard, he and Linda were clearing some down trees on their property, and when he cut one down, he didn't see another, and it landed right on top. And um, thankfully, at this point, no serious life-threatening injuries were sustained, but he's got a lot of recovery. And so does Linda as his primary caregiver and caretaker. So let's lift Charlie in prayer. Lord, we give to you our brother Charlie. Sometimes we just cannot see and anticipate all of the things that are falling on us in life, in the woods, at home. And God, as he is recovering and is sore and is really struggling with the pain, we ask that you would give his body calm, give his body rest and healing, and give his wonderful wife and partner, Linda, strength to care for him. As it is such a difficulty to be the caregiver, a silent hero she absolutely is. And guide us as their faith family to stand with them every step of the way and support them as they go through this trying time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Cheryl. Absolutely. 
Cheryl shared a prayer of joy and thanksgiving for all who work in our schools, whether they be teachers or administrators, whether they be school bus drivers, parents who are taking their kids to school more often now, and also for medical staff, nurses, doctors, people who are working in nursing homes because they're, they've gotten hit hard in our communities lately. Let's lift to God these wonderful people. Lord, we lift to you all of those in the field of education, all of those in the field of medicine. Protect them, Lord, for they are in harm's way. Thank you, Lord, for calling them to this life of service to others, to children, to the elderly, to everyone in between. Lord, as we give to them these gifts of gratitude as they leave this place, let it be felt by them in the deepest parts of who they are as a thank you and a well done from you. Lord, in your mercy. For Jessica and I also want to share a prayer of thanksgiving. Um, you all have been praying for her cousin who last summer uh, was hit while he was on a motorcycle by a vehicle moving pretty fast. And uh, we recently received word that he's going to be going to a kind of live-in recovery facility because his body has healed. He doesn't have um, the halo anymore that's holding his neck in place, but his memory has not come back. So he's going to be relearning a whole lot because sometimes the tapes are raised after about 20 to 25 minutes. And he's a young guy and he has a full life ahead of him. So thank you for praying for him and we ask that you continue to lift Joseph Puccio in your prayers. God, we give to you all these prayers in the multitude unspoken with the words that they have taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go. May the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us at home. We cannot wait to see you next week. Take care. Be blessed and be safe. Amen. Amen.